Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to make music on a computer. So this is geared towards beginners, so I'm going to go over some basic concepts and show you how to get started. So if you know nothing about music production, hopefully you'll learn a thing or two. So let's get into it. All right, so before we get started, I just want to emphasize that gear doesn't really matter. At the beginning, it's more important to focus on learning the simple concepts and basic fundamentals and focus on your music writing more so than worrying about buying the right piece of equipment. Uh, that said, the I guess the main minimum thing you need is obviously a computer because that's what we're talking about today. The other thing you need is some kind of software to record the music. Typically this is called a digital audio workstation or DAW for short or DAW as some people say. And this is just a piece of software that allows you to multi-track and create kind of layers of your songs. You record like a piano, a bass, vocals, guitar. It does a lot more than that. You can run virtual instruments and stuff like that. And there's a bunch of different DAWs available. Ableton Live is a popular one. You have Pro Tools which is popular in the industry. You have Logic from Apple. Um, Sonar, Cubase, Reaper, uh, Fruity Loops or whatever it's called now. Basically there's tons of them and they all do 99% the same thing. So for a DAW choice, I would say don't stress about it too much. Just pick one of the popular, one of the main ones and stick with it. The more important thing is that you stick with it and you learn it fully and take advantage of its features. I personally use Ableton Live, so that's what I'm gonna be showing you, but everything I'm gonna show you is applicable to almost any DAW. All right, so this is a view of Ableton Live as we can see here. Ableton Live has a bunch of different features and I'm gonna hide all the complexity away. We're just gonna focus on what's called the arrangement view. And this is this typical view you would see on almost all DAWs where what you see on a row here is a called a track and that effectively contains one instrument. So for example, you would have one track for piano, one track for drums, one track for guitar. So the way things work is that you can either record audio directly here. So if you have like a guitar or you sing into your software or you can record what's called MIDI and MIDI is just, you can think of it as like sheet music that your computer understands. MIDI doesn't produce music or audio, it just tells the computer what notes to play at what time. And once you use MIDI, you can use what's called a virtual instrument or a VST or a plugin, there's a bunch of different terminology. But effectively it's, it's a way for the computer to play an instrument for you. So you can have an entire piano on your computer or any other instrument really, orchestra instruments, basses, guitars, uh, synthesizers. So in theory, from what I just described, you can make entire albums. All you need is a computer and a piece of software like a DAW. All right, I'm gonna show you how to make a simple track using only Ableton Live and its stock plugins, just to give you an idea of how you would process this. So here we can browse a bunch of different sounds. So let's find a bass to start with. All right, let's pick this one. So what I'm gonna do is just drag it over. So at the bottom here, you can see an example of what a virtual instrument looks like. There's a bunch of different switches and knobs and this is just the way you create the sound with this particular synthesizer. We don't have to worry about that right now because we're using a preset, so it's giving us this bass sound. So now the other thing you would do is activate a metronome, so a typical click if you want to keep in rhythm. And then you arm your track here, which just means it's ready to record. And then you hit record and then you're ready to play your melody. We're just going to keep it super simple. The music is going to be terrible, but I just want to il illustrate the point of how you can quickly create a simple track. So you can probably ignore most of what I'm doing here. The basic gist is that you program a bunch of notes in here and then those notes will play a bass here. So I can rename this track to bass. So now we have a bass. So now I can load a drum kit, for example. So I can load an 808. And all we're doing is just, call this drums, all we're doing is just creating layers and layers. So you create your bass, your drums, and then once we have that, we can create a whole song. So now again, I can just hit record and now I can play the drums. So now we've added some drums. So again, all I'm doing here is just kind of making this loopable, but that's more of a detail and not really important to the basics. So that's basically it. That's how you would kind of do things. You just add one track, make some music, add another track, create layers, and then you create different parts. What I can do is go back here and pick a different bass. So this is the cool thing about MIDI is that since the MIDI itself is not tied to the sound you hear, you can swap out the different sounds, but keep the original kind of melody that you played. So for example, let's say I wanted to swap it out for this one. I can just drag this in and I'll play it. 
So you can see that melody I played is, is still intact, but we just swapped out the instrument. And in addition to virtual instruments, you also have virtual effects. So you may have heard things like reverbs, delays, distortions. So all that exists in a virtual domain as well. So for example, let's add some overdrive to this bass line here. Lower the volume. So now I've added a little distortion unit here. So this, you can think of this going from left to right, the signal chain. So you have MIDI here, which tells it what to play. Then it goes into the synthesizer down here, which actually plays the note. And then you can run it through a bunch of different effects. So I can add an echo here. Now we're gonna hear an echo for the bass line. Obviously this music is terrible right now, but just to get the idea of how you would record this. So, so far we've covered virtual instruments and virtual effects, and we've been in the kind of MIDI domain where you have MIDI information controlling the instrument. The other spectrum of things you can record is just pure audio. So this is how you would record, for example, your vocals, or if you had an acoustic guitar or an electric guitar or any kind of physical domain instruments that you wanna record into here. So the way to do that is just add what's called an audio track. So with audio tracks, you can load in existing audio that you've downloaded. For example, this breakbeat. Or you can record your own by creating a new one and then recording things like a microphone, recording yourself singing or an acoustic guitar or drums or any kind of physical instruments that you wanna bring into the computer. So this is where we get into additional kind of hardware requirements. So far we've done everything using only the laptop and Ableton Live. But if you want to record things from the physical space outside of the computer, then you need what's called an audio interface. So if you look right here, my audio interface is the Audient ID22. There are tons of different other audio interfaces. I'll put links in the description to some common ones that you might check out. They come in all different kinds of uh, features and price ranges. I like the Audient one because it's a good quality to price ratio. It's not the cheapest one, but it's not the most expensive one, but you get really high quality uh, preamps inside. The audio interface will take things like a microphone or a guitar signal, and it'll turn it into a digital signal that your computer can understand. And it'll do the opposite as well. It'll take whatever is playing from the computer and turn it back into analog signal, which you can hear on headphones or plug into your speakers or monitors. And obviously the better quality audio interfaces have higher quality preamps. So if you're using a microphone or something, you'll get a less noise and a kind of a higher quality signal going into the computer. So that's really what you're paying when you're getting the more expensive ones. The other things that you gain from other interfaces is multiple different inputs at the same time. So this is important if you have, for example, if you wanna record a full band with like six different microphones and you wanna make sure that everything is recorded as separate tracks in your computer, then you need an audio interface with multiple different inputs at the same time or channels as they're called. If you're just a bedroom producer and you're doing mostly everything in the box, in theory, you don't need any uh, inputs from your interface. You just use your interface to monitor your sound at a high quality, but you can do everything inside your computer. And if you just wanna do a singer songwriter thing where it's just you and a guitar, then you only need two inputs, one for your guitar and then one for your vocals. I've been using a two channel interface for the longest time and it's been working fine for me because I typically multi-track one instrument at a time. All right, so let me show you a quick example of how to use a mic. So you grab any kind of microphone and then you feed it into the back of your audio interface, which will typically have an XLR input. And then once that's connected, you create an audio track and then you pick whatever channel from your audio interface. So if you plugged it into the first slot, you pick channel one. And then it's the same thing as the MIDI track. You just hit record, you make sure the track is armed and then you just record your uh, vocals. Check one, two. And so obviously we can add effects to this as well. So I can add that same overdrive. We can add an echo, a chorus. You can just create chains of these effects and then you can listen to what that sounds like. world's worst song ever. But just to give you an example, that's how you would work. So right now we can see we have a combination of two kinds of tracks. We have audio tracks here. And you can see for audio tracks, you see the actual waveform of how the audio was captured versus for MIDI tracks, you see these little blocks that represent the different notes at different parts. So that's basically all you need to know. You have MIDI tracks that go through virtual instruments 
and then you have audio tracks that contain the audio itself. And then all you're doing is literally just multi-tracking. So you create a track here for one instrument, create another one and just keep adding layers. In Ableton Live and maybe in other DAWs as well, you could use your QWERTY keyboard on your computer to play notes like this which obviously is not super convenient, but it's it's definitely a way you can do it. The other way you can input notes is you can draw them in by hand. So you can create a clip here and you create this little pencil. And then with the pencil, you can literally draw the notes on this little keyboard here. So in theory, you can make music with just the computer without any external kind of controllers, but it's way more cumbersome, especially if you want to do melodic things and especially if you're a keyboard player. So that's where MIDI controllers come in. They don't produce any sound on their own. They're literally just, they look like piano keyboards, but all they do is send MIDI information to the computer. So similar how I could play the notes here, here I can play them with an actual keyboard. And that's how I've been recording things so far. So if we record a melody now. Then you have that recorded. So again, MIDI controllers come in all different shapes and sizes. You get mini ones like this with small keys. You can get full 88 key hammer action ones that feel like a real piano. So I would definitely recommend getting some kind of MIDI controller, doesn't matter which one, especially if you're a keyboard player. But even if you're not, I find even for programming drums or anything, it's much more convenient to have a physical thing. And again, I'll put a link in the description to a few different uh, ranges of MIDI controllers that you can check out if you're just getting started. So I've showed you how to record external audio using a microphone, but you can also record other kinds of hardware like an electric guitar, a bass guitar, or even hardware like physical synthesizers. For those, all you have to do is plug the signal directly into the input of your audio interface, typically into like a line input or a DI input if you have a low signal like a guitar. So what's cool about bringing in your guitar here is there is a virtual amplifier plugins that you can use here. Like one of them is Guitar Rig by Native Instruments. So this is another example of a virtual effect. So here you can pick different things. It's almost like having a virtual stack of different amps. So you can pick and choose which amp you want, uh, which speaker cabinet you want, which guitar pedals. You have almost have this little whole world inside your computer. And obviously you can record this just like we did before. Play that back. And like we did before, you can start adding drums now. Anyways, just to give you an example. So, so far I've showed you how to record music in a DAW. The next two steps, if you wanna actually publish your music is you need some kind of mixing and then mastering. So you don't have to go crazy here. Mixing is just a way to balance the levels of all the different sounds in your music. And then mastering is just a way to get it kind of evened out and polished at the final stages, just to make it ready to be listened in different environments like headphones and cars and stuff like that. But you don't have to go crazy there. Definitely don't worry about that too much at the beginning stages. If you're just getting started, focus more on making the music because it can be very overwhelming at the beginning. There's just so much to learn. And the best way to move forward is just stay very focused and minimal and simple. Finally, let's talk about the kind of listening environment, which I think is another important piece. Uh, you could, in theory, make music using just earbuds and a laptop, and you can be in an airport somewhere and make a whole track. There's no reason you couldn't do that. But once you kind of advance and you start and you want to polish your music a bit more, it's important to be able to hear things properly, especially if you're mixing and mastering your own music. And the way to hear your stuff properly is through a good set of headphones and a good set of what are called studio monitors, which are effectively like speakers, but they're more neutral and they're meant to be reference uh, for referencing music. So you can actually hear things properly without having too much bass emphasized, for example. And the other thing that helps with a listening environment is having proper acoustic treatment, which is just a way to uh, make sure that your room doesn't have weird echoes and kind of cancellations. What I have in my studio is I have these uh, Focal Alphas and I have a Prima Acoustic set of 
uh, acoustic treatment in here. And then I have this Di Bayer Dynamic DT770s. So I use a combination of the monitors and the headphones and I kind of switch between those. And I sit in the middle in a position where I've spent some time making sure that I'm triangulated with the monitors that are at the right level and that all the kind of acoustic mats are properly kind of bouncing things over. Obviously it's not a perfect room, I'm just in a kind of house bedroom here, but it's, it's a huge difference from how I used to do things before where I had monitors against the wall in the corner of a room, it was untreated. And the only reason I say that in this beginner video is that it's something I wish I had known at the beginning. I spent my money and time looking at synthesizers and kind of instruments because it was like an instant gratification, but only after I got monitors and proper treatment that I really see a significant change in my music. If you are going down that path, I would recommend investing in proper hearing environment and a proper interface and headphones, because these are kind of the basics, the stuff that will be with you regardless of the genre, regardless of what you're doing, uh, regardless of the instruments, regardless of the computer, you will always need good monitors, treatment, and maybe a good pair of headphones. There's obviously debates whether you need monitors or not. There's people who make production ready music using just headphones. I think ultimately what matters most is getting used to your equipment and where it lacks and kind of compensating for that. So you don't need to go overboard at the beginning by getting everything all at once. So I just wanna restate what I said at the beginning that ultimately gear doesn't matter. I know I talked about like interfaces and and MIDI controllers and treatments and monitors and all that. So the gear doesn't matter in the sense that you can start with anything. Don't use gear, not having gear as an excuse not to make music. Because in theory, any computer you have at home, I almost sure that you can make music with it. Even if you get a free software like Audacity and literally just record yourself like singing with a guitar. But gear matters obviously in the sense that as you're progressing, certain tools help you do things more efficiently and with better sound quality. So in that sense, you can can always upgrade but the core principles of just kind of writing the music won't change so if anything at the beginning if you feel like you don't have enough gear focus more on the songwriting and the music first because then regardless of what gear you get in the future you know your songs will sound good so yeah hopefully this was interesting let me know if you have any questions about setup it's hard for me to kind of remember what it was like not knowing all this stuff at the beginning so if there's any points you want me to clarify let me know. I'm not an expert by any means, but this is the kind of stuff that I would have wanted to hear back when I first started and all these things were kind of mystery to me. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. Go out there and make music. Let me know which DAW you use. Let me know which one you decide to pick. There are some cheap ones like Reaper is fairly inexpensive. So that's a great way to get started. Ableton also has a light version that comes shipped with a bunch of different hardware like MIDI controllers and stuff like that. So if you're gonna, if you're looking to buy a MIDI controller anyways, try to find ones that come with a version of Ableton Lite, which just gives you, I think, eight tracks and kind of minimal features, but it's plenty to get started and make music with. There's also plenty of free uh, virtual instruments and synthesizers. So there's really no excuse in this day and age not to make music because everyone basically has a computer and there are so many free and relatively inexpensive pieces of software that you can use. Thanks so much for watching. Go make some music. I'll catch you guys in the next.